What's up guys, my name is Tyler, and on this episode of Behind the Design, we're gonna talk about the Z1 Motorsports Q50 and Q60 intake system uh, for the VR30 engine. Intakes are usually one of the first mods that people choose for their cars, and most people understand that an intake that's less restrictive, pulling in cooler outside air, is gonna make more power. But why exactly is that the case? Cooler, unrestricted airflow is denser airflow. Denser airflow means more oxygen. More oxygen means that you can use more fuel. And if you have more oxygen and more fuel, that means higher cylinder pressures, which translates directly to more power. For a naturally aspirated engine, that's the whole story. But for a turbocharged engine, having a free-flowing intake system is even more important. Not only does it affect the quality of the air being ingested, but it also reduces the amount of work being done by the turbocharger and in turn reduces the amount of heat generation. To get a better understanding of why that is, let's take a look at a compressor map. This is a rough approximation of a factory VR30 turbocharger compressor map. On the x-axis you have airflow in pounds per minute. As a general rule of thumb, 10 pounds per minute roughly translates to about 100 horsepower. It's not perfect, but it'll work for this example. On the y-axis you have the pressure ratio, and these lines here represent turbocharger shaft speed in RPM. When we talk about how much boost a car makes, we're referring to gauge pressure, or the amount of pressure above atmospheric pressure. Absolute pressure is the amount of pressure above full vacuum. In order to calculate the pressure ratio, you have to use absolute pressure in the calculation. The non-sport models target 8.7 PSI gauge. In order to convert that to absolute pressure, you have to add 14.7 PSI, or one atmosphere. This gives us the outlet pressure. The inlet pressure in an ideal, unrestricted system should be equal to one atmosphere, 14.7 PSI. This gives us the inlet pressure. The pressure ratio is outlet divided by inlet, which for the non-sport models gives us a result of 1.6. For the red sport models, they target a boost pressure of 14.7 PSI gauge, which is convenient because that gives us a final result of two for the pressure ratio. Now that we've calculated these pressure ratio values, we can plot them on a compressor map. Now, this is a compressor map for one turbo on a VR30 engine, which means it's responsible for only half of the power output. So on a non-sport model, that's about 150 horsepower, and on a red sport, that's about 200 horsepower. So, for the non-sport, that means 15 pounds per minute and a pressure ratio of 1.6 puts our dot right here. And for the red sport models, that's 20 pounds per minute and a pressure ratio of two, which puts our dot right there. This is what the graph should look like under ideal conditions, meaning that the air going into the compressor is completely unrestricted. However, during testing, we've seen a pressure drop of up to two PSI at the compressor inlet with the factory intakes. So what does that look like over here? Well, outlet pressure stays the same because the factory map sensors actually report absolute pressure values, which means that they're unaffected by atmospheric pressure. Inlet pressure, however, gets reduced by two PSI. So we'll change that, and we'll change that. This actually changes our result for the non-sports from 1.6 to 1.85, and for the red sports from two to 2.3. Now, if we come back over to our graph and we plot these points, you'll have something like this. Why does this matter? Well, this gap here between the two points for Red Sport and the two points for Non Sport represent work being done by the turbocharger just to overcome the restriction in, in the intake system, not to make more power. As you move up the compressor map, turbo shaft speed increases. So all of that work is being wasted in the form of increased turbo shaft speed and additional heat generation, all before you make your first pound of boost. Now that we understand what we want to improve, Let's take a look at the factory system and see what we're starting with. So we've got our stock intake box and we've got the inlet. The primary problem with these intakes is this right here. And the reason why is because of all of these ribs. This does not create a smooth pathway for the air to follow. They also uh, just dump this air directly into the turbocharger. Uh, without any kind of a lip to smooth out the airflow, so it's just running into the front edge of the compressor. Now let's get into the Z1 intake system, starting at the compressor housing. The first piece is the inlet tube. 
This inlet tube is five ply reinforced silicone with a fluorosilicone liner. Uh, the fluorosilicone will prevent oil seepage through the material and make this thing last a lot longer than it otherwise would have. We also incorporated steps at both ends on the inside to transition from the MAF housing to the inlet tube and from the inlet tube to the compressor housing. Overall, this is a dramatic improvement over stock. And this piece alone is responsible for the majority of the 8 to 10% increase in flow that we achieved with this system over stock. So from the inlet tube, we move to the MAF housing. And then from the MAF housing, we move to the air filter. The filter was designed in-house and has a couple of really cool features. Uh, there's a step on the inside, just like in the inlet tubes, that helps create a smooth transition from the filter to the mass airflow housing. And above that is a velocity stack that improves the airflow going into the mass airflow housing. Finally, we have the intake boxes. These boxes were designed to integrate with the factory cowl cover, which directs fresh, cool air from the front bumper and into the air box. We have two different material options for the air boxes, one in black plastic and the other in carbon fiber. For the plastic air box, we were afforded a little more design freedom with the rotomold process, which allowed us to add a design on top to resemble the factory engine cover. Carbon manufacturing isn't quite as flexible, but ultimately it still looks fantastic. That wraps up this episode of Behind the Design. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment on what you want to see next.